this is a uh, 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 follows on from the last section uh, which suddenly went off on the camera last night uh, for some reason perhaps I was out of energy and it reflected that in some way I was talking about Jordan Peterson's uh, Saturn in Aquarius and the way that we can see his uh, the, the subject matter and his, uh, his, his own authority on this Aquarian element, which is to do with the, the group and a group identity and, uh, and all of that. Uh, the sign of Aquarius um, is, is, is very reflective of the knowledge of the whole a knowledge of the interrelationships of systems to individuals and individuals to systems, often cosmology or metaphysics, or more particularly in a humanitarian sense of, of political movements and uh, thinking patterns and, as I say, social theorists, often connected to this sign of Aquarius, things that belong to the whole systems theory. And, of course, it can get very heady um, because it's to do with metaphysical speculation. Um, Jung, with his Aquarius Ascendant, talks about the common, the common archetypes of humanity, and that that vision isn't so much religious, but it does bring us all together into the same, um, the same business of getting on with um, the world, getting on with the human in the, uh, human life. It it brings kind of principles down to collect us together in this common theme called our human life or the human family. So many uh, uh, Aquarians are looking for a theory to understand the whole. Um, uh, it's a very scientific sign. It, it seeks facts. It's a fixed sign. It needs to fix uh, f uh, 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 mental ideas or just uh, uh, ideas into fixed theories and, and, and work from that point. It needn't um, uh, mean that they're absolute, although Aquarius tends to work that way. They get uh, absolute ideas about something and then can't be shifted very much. That's a tendency of the fixed signs. Until, of course, some other new knowledge comes along and there's something within the sign that tears down the old understanding of things. Um, rather like Scorpio, it tears down the emotional relationships and Taurus um, uh, it fixes something up for all time. It takes a, usually a crisis to kind of get over it. Or, or, or Leo tends to fix itself on its own development and forgets that there are other people. Yeah, that's it, of course, is in a very broad sense, I mean, about that sign. But... Leo has an intensity to, uh, 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 and an interest in what is developing within the South that they can get glamorised, if you like, by their own drama. Aquarius can get glamorised by the group drama or ideology or, or thinking patterns that should relate to everybody. They get these great visions, uh, visions of something and then uh, sometimes when they don't fit actual humanity uh, uh, then they can get very upset indeed or start becoming a little bit tyrannical themselves. After all, the sign is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. Uranus is a reforming, um, rebellious part of Aquarius that challenges things. And then the Saturn tries to fix one's ideology in place. And so within the sign, there's a very reforming element where it knows that if, if things are fixed too much, then there's not enough freedom. Very peculiar sign in many ways to see that it's a fixed air. Air needs flexibility. It needs to float around. It's pushed around. It's, 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 it's to do with social interaction, um, to do with chewing the cud and thinking about things in a very fluid way. Um, Gemini is more fluid, of course. It's immutable. Um, the, uh, the bl not blending the uh, discussion between ideas mutual mutual idea between one level of life psychological uh, and another perhaps the behavioral uh, Isabel Pagan called Gemini the sign of the artist who converts ideas or, or, or processes within them or experiences into another medium through which they can be experienced in a different way So we looked at this Saturn in um, uh, Aquarius in Jordan Peterson's and I was, I was seeing that in many ways his, his life has uh, unfolded upon this pattern. 
uh, he, I, I believe he had a firm um, understanding about the grossness of humanity, or the, the downsides to it, where tyrannical structures can become so powerful that they, they um, crush the individual um, with the power of an ideological fixation. You could call it an e-day fix in many ways of uh, the Freudian kind until such time that it takes a, re a revolution or a rebellion to break that structure, social structure down. And then uh, and then there's a, a mess, of course. And I think this Saturn in Aquarius is looking at that. He's using Jung, he's using Nietzsche, he's using Solzhenitsyn, he's using those those people that have been in these situations and uh, and uh, expressed themselves uh, quite often quite beautifully to to um, to show and to um, give give out information if you like about what they've understood about life. It's a very Aquarian thing, but what I wanted to say was that I saw this video, I, I, I think it was Ruben, uh, his name, I'm, I'm sorry if I can't remember the, um, the, the uh, Christian name, first name, um, where he was asked the question, when did you become serious? And serious, of course, is a very Saturnian word, the same as uh, authoritarian, mature, austere, um, uh, tyrannical in its extreme, or uh, a kindly... Um, uh, mentoring, all of that kind of thing that Peterson has taken on. Very much we see him as a Saturnian figure, I think. But this word, when did you get serious, um, was asked him, and he, he described when um, a, a time when he came back from a party and he was feeling rather morose or down, had a tendency towards a lot of um, alcohol or something he was mentioning, and any Neptune, remember he's got a square to Neptune, and uh, the, the the Mars brings in the anger or the aggression that may have been suppressed by many things. Uh, uh, I think in that internal Saturn was a a, a very powerful sense of feeling uh, uh, under the constraints of his own emotional life. And that square to to Neptune. Neptune got the upper hand of him, I think, in those days, um, trying to seek a redeeming element uh, in life. And because I talked about Neptune a few videos ago about the figure of the redeemer of it being perhaps a buddha figure but more like adopted more more like adopted through the christian tradition through pisces the fish whose ruler of course is neptune so neptune could be dionysus which is the redeemer of the uh, so through alcohol or drugs or an experience of escapism or nirvana or an attempting a, a neo racism about getting to a time before the um uh, Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. And Neptune is the is our is our desire in us for a redeeming place, a or a, whether it's in a relationship or an ideology or um, a place sometime where there, there is. But this is a romantic ideal, an image of an ideal, um, which which is somewhere in us, but lies beyond, I think, uh, human existence. But it. It represents that idea but that we can get back to a unity consciousness with God, a, a henosis of some kind or a, um, a, a, a vision where finally we're at peace in the waters of, in the, waters of the divine or paradise. You know, sometimes this is projected onto the idea of enlightenment or nirvana states. And interesting enough, my mind is going towards uh, Kurt Cobain, who who had, uh, I think, a grand trine in water with sun in Pisces or moon in Pisces, some very powerful Pisces figure uh, who eventually lost himself in the sea of oblivion, I think, of um, uh, feeling experiences and uh, uh, just lost his own way, he lost his own um, emotional anchoring, I think he may have lost. So this, what Peterson did, um, he said to this interviewer that he came back some time from a party and he was a bit uh, drunk, a bit worse for wear, a bit morose, depressed. And either that night or over a, a, a few days later, started, he started drawing. He started sketching something, free association sketching. It's a wonderful kind of thing to do that Jung used to do when... 
his emotional states overcame him. He started painting. It wasn't a, a particularly uh, a structured painting. He just found himself painting something, and it turned into uh, a Christ-like figure who was surrounded by a snake. And he wandered, uh, wandered and thought about, typical of his own nature, Gemini in nature and so on, really thought about this image. And he, he would have been interested in Jung, or maybe this got him interested in Jung. But um, when I heard this, I immediately saw astrologically Pisces, that Neptune, sorry, that Neptune character, which is the Redeemer, which is often connected to the Christ figure or Christ force. And in Scorpio, Scorpio is the sign of the serpent. Um, the, the, um, the power of, uh, the initiating power of the awareness of one's own mortality, of, of, of death, which is shown through the, the serpent and the reptilian elements in life, the predatorial elements in life that are, that are out there, which Scorpio are well known to be um, connected to. So here we have then, when I was thinking about the astrological symbolism come into play, was the snake around the Garden of Eden, was it, or the snake around this figure of Christ, who, who, who somehow was, it, 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 the, the redemption of the figure was an acceptance, if you like, of, of the Scorpionic realm, which is the realm uh, ruled by Pluto, the realm of the underworld, of the dark and the instinctual. An awareness that life inevitably moved towards a, a, a death. And yet, in the face of that, in the face of one's suffering of incarnate reality and the inevitability of our own demise, and it, uh, which, which is this Neptune, almost as if he had a, a kind of epiphany, perhaps, or a, a real awareness that his own unconscious could produce spontaneous images telling him something and, and and so then he went back and he said that's the time when I started to get my own difficulties of thinking and to get out the Mars to actually do something to clean up his own room to clean up his own act and probably then started to um, strategize his own way forward as well as of course continuing on to to find out those things in life which would pull So that symbolism then has never appeared to me before like, but that as a redeemer figure surrounded by the serpent of death, um, uh, which of, co of course also has another uh, characteristic, the serpent is also the awakener. Uh, the bite of the serpent is not necessarily the bite of death. Um, the bite of the serpents uh, that in entwine the mercurial caduceus, for example, are, are the poison which will kill you, but also the poison which will um, heal you. So the, the, there is a dark side. The dark side of the serpent of death is very much connected to Scorpio. Um, the serpent of healing often connected to Mercury or, or um, Virgo in many ways, uh, who, whose ruler is Mercury, to do with the astrological sixth house, to do with healing and the, the discovery of certain kind of poisons which can actually heal rather than harm. So I wanted to delineate that um, as well here because we can start to, be, start to see the interplay of Saturn which is what to do in life, the, the coming to terms with our own incarnate reality, the limitations of it, uh, the, uh, our own need to become uh, self-disciplined and into focused action of our career or ambition, to clean up our own room, as he, he likes to say, as, as Peterson likes to say, but also to become an authority in oneself in order to safeguard our own independence, but also having an eye, a Neptunian eye on a higher divinity, somewhere beyond the known, somewhere in us, perhaps a, the unconscious itself, just to use a... a, 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 a a um, Jungian term, that somewhere in there, there may be 
um, uh, other intelligences which can communicate, which can communicate um, from beyond the rational known, perhaps from the higher nous or or regions beyond. No matter how you conceptualize it, maybe it's just the a sense somewhere in the brain of a holistic connection uh, throughout the entire brain and that 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 connection to the whole that Jung tells us that our, our our being has sometimes slips through and can inform us about things that can help our way forward as we evolve